welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Jen. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about all of the read alouds that we have done this year for the 2022-23 homeschool year here at our house. We have a mix of doing some group things as a family, some things we do as an entire family. We have other things throughout the day that we do in sort of like smaller groups of us, kind of according a little bit more to age. And then of course they have their independent work that they do that is very, you know, uh, age and grade specific. But one thing that we enjoy doing that we have been doing forever, that we continue to do that I do not see us ever stopping um, as long as we're homeschooling is our morning time, morning basket, morning cart. Uh, we just kind of call it morning time around here. And it is when we do our read alouds. So we do a whole bunch of other things, you know, our devotionals, memorization, um, we incorporate a whole bunch of things into that. I would say one of our favorite things that we do is our read alouds. And so usually what I will do is like, um, when I'm prepping for next year's homeschool year, I will start looking for books. Now we have quite a few books in our house. All of my kids are big readers and you know, that's just kind of, kind of just been a thing that we've fostered. And we do put a lot of focus on reading, the importance of reading. Um, and so we have <laughs> quite an extensive library, like our own home library. I don't even want to call it a homeschool library because like I said, we just constantly getting them books. We have books everywhere. And so if you've gotten any glimpses of our home, you'll know we have bookshelves kind of scattered everywhere. I have my own bookshelf back here behind me. I have another one in front of me. But usually what I will do is I will look through to see anything that we already have. Even if it's something, I don't really concern myself too much with whether or not a like a specific kid or multiple kids have read that book or not. It's always fun when you pick a book that nobody has read yet, but every once in a while I might pick a book that maybe one kid has decided to read on their own. Um, and we will do that as a read aloud. Now, one of those books, for instance, is the um, Narnia series. We actually haven't gotten through that whole series, but um, we've read, I think the first three books, I think it is. A couple of my kids had read a few of those, but they still enjoyed because there's something different about having it read to you and listening to it with a group. And, you know, I just, I just don't, I think that you're never too old to enjoy that. I will also look and see if there's anything that maybe I thought about for the previous year that maybe we didn't get to. And I will just kind of roll that over into our new list. I do a variety of things. I go on Amazon and look for kids books. I will go to bookstores and just kind of look around. Sometimes I pull up some lists. I don't so much look up sort of the popular like kids lists because I don't know, I find they're hit or miss and they're most of the time misses to be honest with you because I'm very particular about what we read in our house. Sometimes I just try to listen out for suggestions that other people have given on books. A lot of our books, I would say, not all of them, but a lot of them tend to be classics, older publications, older books. And obviously we do find, you know, we do find some new ones, but I would say usually it's, it's more of the older books, barely any of like newer books that have come out in the last, I don't know, five or six years. I'm going to go through everything that we've read. We are actually just a couple weeks out here from finishing school. And so we are in the middle of our, it's probably going to be our last read aloud, I'm assuming for our homeschool year. And I'll show you that because we're already enjoying that one. So I'm not going to go too much into detail and I, I'm not going to do them in any particular order necessarily. I mean, I guess I sort of can if I tried hard enough. This is the general order of um, how we read them and give you guys just kind of synopsis of the book and if we liked it or not. You know, they were mostly uh, hits. Everybody seemed to like the majority of the books. Now there is one book here. And I talk, if you follow me on Instagram, I kind of like talked about it on there and I'm laughing because 
It's not that the book itself was a bad book, but my kids just kind of had very specific opinions on it. So we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so the first book I want to start off with is this one, and it's called The Hat Makers. Now, I'm pretty sure, okay, so there is a second book. I don't know if it's a continuing series or not, but this is The Hat Makers, and then there's The Map Makers. And basically, it's like, it's a very, it's very much a fantasy book. And it's about this family who are hat makers, but they make hats that, and they're able to infuse magic in these hats. So when you wear the hat, you get a little piece of whatever magic was infused into the hat. They actually make a lot of the hats for royalty, you know, like bravery and being noble and just all that kind of stuff. You learn very early on that the one girl who's sort of the main character, her father goes missing on a ship and they presume that he's dead, but she has a feeling that he is not, that he's just missing, but that he's still alive. So she's kind of on this quest to find her father. And along the way, you know, there's all these mishaps with hats being put in the wrong hands. And um, there's of course somebody who's kind of out to get their family, who kind of has a grudge against their family. There's kidnapping, there's capers. I mean, it's just all around, it's, it's a pretty fast paced, like I said, fantastical kind of book. My kids really loved it. It was a great story. There was suspense. Like I said, there was action a lot of times. The um, chapters ended like on a cliffhanger and actually the book kind of ended on a cliffhanger because you don't, everything doesn't get resolved. Now I will say though, and this is after doing <laughs> quite a bit of research before I picked this book up because this is a newer book, 2021. Okay, so 2021, just as a heads up, if you care, there was, I can think of one specific um, spot in the book where I was reading it and it does make a reference to these two boys and they have like an attraction to each other and they kiss. It honestly does nothing for the plot or for the story at all. It really just honestly felt like it was just thrown in there for the sake of it being thrown in there, which is always agitating extra to me. I mean, I don't want that in books that I'm reading to my kids or that my kids are reading, to be honest with you. But especially when it's very much just like adds nothing, like does nothing for the story um, at all. It's just so, <laughs> so annoying, honestly. And that's just my opinion right there. Um, luckily though, as I was approaching that part, I was kind of like skimming ahead and I was sort of able to see that it was coming up and I was able to adjust how I read that part. I'm just letting you know, I don't, I, I, I mean, if I had marked it, if I had thought about it, I could have marked it and told you guys where it was, but um, it's unfortunate because again, this was, a great story and a great book overall aside from that part i don't know so you have to kind of decide if you want to do that if you want to be able to just kind of edit that part out which you can like i said it's pretty easy to because it does not affect the story at all but just be aware that that is in there minus that though we all love this book and when we finished it the kids were already asking if we were going to read the next one and the jury's still out i'll have to do a lot more research and kind of see if it's worth it or not to move on to book two so there's that one another one we read pretty early on was sweet home alaska this is a sweet story about this girl and her family and kind of just like them being part of the first settlers to move to alaska start the community there and she's very hesitant to go and um you know but they're having a really hard time making ends meet and the dad is basically just like I think this is just something we need to do and so he moves them there and it's kind of just the story of them settling you know like everything we're we're, we're talking like schools communities you know she's very much into reading and so her and some friends kind of start up like a library there and yeah it's just kind of the story of moving and trying to set up a new life and getting to know new people and making friends and even you know even the mom is very hesitant and she's having a very hard time because she's away from her family unlikely friendships that take place and you know, how they all sort of make it work. So this was lovely. We all really enjoyed this one. Two thumbs up for sure. So after that, we went ahead and read, I think, The Trumpet 
the trumpet of the swan so again another oldie um, I don't know when this was published celebrating 50 years so there you go 50 50 years ago Wow this is the same author E.B. White who wrote is it Stuart Little yeah I think it's Stuart Little but the trumpet of the swan this is one of those books that I've heard of heard about forever and I don't know, just kind of passed up on it. I was actually originally just going to give this to my 10 year old to read as her independent reading. And then at the last minute, like I was reading the back of it and I was like, I don't know, I think this is kind of just gonna be a nice one for, for like a read aloud for everybody. And I'm so glad I did because it was such a sweet story again. We love this one, just wholesome <laughs> and just, like sweet it really was but basically there's this son and this dad and they actually it's in Canada that they go um, fishing I'm trying to remember if it says where specifically it just says Western Canada yes they live in Montana they go on camping trips um, to go fishing him and his dad and there he finds this swan family uh, they have little babies and he kind of befriends them. He finds that there's this one swan that does not make any noise. And so you kind of get like the perspective of the boy, but you then you also get the perspective of the actual swans. You know, they talk they talk to each other through their honking and stuff. There's one little one little guy and he can't make any sounds. He can't honk or anything like that. And so the boy notices this after a while and then obviously the parents notice this and the story is sort of about him finding his voice and the different things that he does that his parents do for him that the boy does for him because they strike up him and this specific swan strike up a friendship um to help him to make sound and to be able to talk and he actually ends up being quite smart and learning a lot um and it kind of just follows him it's it's multi-layered because it's like you see um, the friendship between him and the boy as they grow up. You see him as he struggles with not having the typical voice like of a swan um, and learning to kind of handle that. And then just the dyna dynamic between him and the family and his parents and then venturing out on his own and trying to make a life for his own. Um, so it was just... It, it's just got a lot of like life lessons, a lot of opportunities to talk about different things, about differences, um, about, you know, kind of being able to live the life that you have, make the most of it. It was just, it was really, it was just such a nice story. Everybody got very attached to, what was his name? Lewis. Lewis? I don't, I, I don't know if it was Lewis or Louis. I think it's Lewis. I think we said Lewis the whole time, but I could be wrong. It could be Louis. I don't know. Me and the kids had this conversation. I guess I could have looked it up, but anyway, this was a winner. We loved that book. Then this was another one that I heard of and then just was like, you know what? Let's just add that to our read aloud list. Um, and it's Sarah Plain and Tall. This is the 30th anniversary of this one. And it also has the John Newberry metal stamp. This one, I don't know if this one had one or not. No, this is a very short book. There's a few books in uh, this series that kind of follow, I think they follow, well, it follows the family, but I think it focuses on different characters within the family. There's a little boy and a girl and their dad and their mother has passed away and so now Sarah comes into the picture and is kind of like she moves out to the prairies with them and kind of has to get adjusted to where they live. Her and the dad kind of form a relationship. They fall in love and you know the kids are kind of watching all this happen but they're so desperate for like a mom because they miss having having one there and again it's very much just there's not so much of like a plot i mean there is a little bit of, there's a storyline but it's more just you following these characters kind of got like a found family aspect to it in a way watching the relationships develop between you know her and the dad and also the children and her also you know her getting adjusted to where they live they're going through some hard times as well the dynamic of them working together to get through hard times to you know just lean on each other and stuff so I loved all the messages that were in this book and then along with that I did pick up the second one which is called Skylark 
and this one continues the story on and you know there's also animals in the mix as well of course the possibility of them moving and possibly growing their family again these are really short a lot of these books like the first few books i showed you were about like the 300 page range so we usually will drag those ones out <laughs> over a few weeks because i just read a chapter or two a day and kind of make it last these ones were not as easy to do that we i think we got through each of these like it within the week so they're very short and i think there's a third oh no there's actually more than that so sarah plain and tall skylark and then there's caleb's story more perfect than the moon and grandfather's dance i will probably end up getting those other ones just to kind of continue and wrap up um you know these stories but these were two great ones just and great for all ages too that's the other thing i was going to say i would say like all of these i have a six-year-old all the way up to a 16 year old and all of these were great for all the kids so here is the controversial book that i was mentioning at the start okay where the red fern grows you've probably heard of it right i mean i've heard of it didn't know anything about it other than what the cover looked like and i figured well i mean i looked into it before i got it but prior to that i knew oh a boy and some dogs okay that's pretty much what i knew about it let's see 1961 it says is the original i guess so it, it is essentially a book about this boy who really wants to get some hunting dogs some hound dogs so he saves his money and he is able to do so they become very a very successful team hunting coons <laughs> being able to sell them he makes some extra money for himself and for his family and then uh ends up signing up for this big like hunting this like year or annual like hunting contest where it's like the person who gets the most coons wins an award and there's like a cash prize and so he's trying to do all this so that he can help his family out this just takes you through the journey of a boy <laughs> and his dogs now i would say if you are any kind of animal lover at all like there's aspects to this book that is just so it's so touching and lovely because of the love between him and these these dogs and the the love they obviously have for him as well if you're a dog lover even more so now if you are a dog lover and you have dogs we have, we've had dogs we, we currently have a dog we have a black lab jake um, who we all adore and would would very many a time in the morning be laying with us and sitting on us and stuff all i don't want to spoil it right i'm sure most people know i had no idea where this went like how this ended or anything like that i'm sure most people do so i don't know if i would be spoiling it necessarily right but spoiler is very sad it is very very sad i mean there's multiple times throughout the book that are sad but the ending of this book is like <laughs> heart-wrenching sad and so as much like the journey of the book i would say we enjoyed you know like reading the book going through the whole thing was very touching and everybody was just hanging off of every word that i read as we got to the end and you could kind of see what was coming and finished i remember when we finished it like i remember the day that we finished it and like I feel like I'm laughing because no, it's not. I don't want to make it seem like it's like it's not like the most awful thing in the world. I'm just saying, right? My kids are very sensitive when it comes to just like animals, but especially dogs because we have a dog and they love him. And so the way this book ended was just not ideal. They gave it a thumbs down. Like I seriously, I was like, "What'd you think?" And they were like, "That was the worst book we've ever, we've ever heard." And actually, when we were about I would say halfway through it, I said to the kids, oh, I think there's a, um, uh, a movie. I think this has been made into a movie. And the kids were all like, oh, cool. Because like any time that we can find a movie, you know, if it's appropriate, the kids want to watch it. And I think that's like a cool way to wrap up a book. But by the end of the book, they were literally like, that was the worst book. And we are not watching this movie. Like, I, we don't even want to, don't. Like, don't. They were basically like reprimanding me already. Don't even think about putting that movie on so i don't know how to actually rate this book <laughs> if your kids are not as sensitive as mine maybe because like i said the story itself was so, so beautifully told and you really could feel 
that relationship just a boy and his dogs you know what i mean you can't well, like you can't get more pure than that but that's what makes it that much more heartbreaking at the end so i don't know do with that as you will okay and then um this is the second last book which is part of the christian heroes series then and now we try to get at least through one of these every year some years we get through two but this year this was the only one that we did this is dietrich bonhoeffer in the midst of wickedness if you don't know who dietrich bonhoeffer is he was a pastor living in germany was he living in germany sorry yes he was living in germany right around the nazi occupation he was a child saw the whole thing happen and he became did I already say he became a pastor he was a pastor he became a pastor and kind of traveled all over Europe but he also was a teacher like a professor he spoke and he also was a pastor at the same time could see early on the dangers of what was going on with Hitler and the Nazis and the whole regime and everything like that while some people were, were still thinking like oh this is great like early on you know he's going to bring our country together he's going to make us great again all this kind of stuff because they had just come out of a war um, he could see the early signs of this being bad he joined a resistance of you know they were basically plotting to assassinate Hitler and the multiple attempts of his assassination which it's like every time we would read them, my kids were like, oh my goodness, how many times they came close and it didn't work out. It was kind of crazy. This was very intense. It's not like explicit or anything. I mean, it is, it's historical, so it's gonna tell you what was going on. But I wouldn't say it goes into too much detail that's like too intense. Again, I have a six year old. Um, obviously I'm careful with what I read, but I didn't think it was inappropriate i thought it was very eye-opening though very just I, you know i just we had a lot of conversations about this book i mean my kids know his history behind hitler and the nazis and that whole thing um but just getting this kind of perspective of someone else who was there maybe like a part of the story that you haven't heard before it was just um, i'd heard of him but i didn't know the whole all the details um but it was fascinating to read about and it obviously it's sad and it's awful to read about but also the bravery of him and everyone involved just i don't know it just like makes you think about Every time we read these, it's like, you know, it makes you think about what it really is to stand up for your faith, stand up for what's right, go against the crowd, like when everyone else is saying this and you're saying something else and standing by your convictions and what you believe. This is just was so inspiring. We all really adored this one. All right, so the last book that I'm going to talk about is the one that we are currently reading as of right now. We are almost halfway through it and it is the one and only Ruby. This is the third, am I right? The third book? The third book, sorry, my brain is like all over the place. Um, so the first one was the one and only Ivan and then the one and only Bob. And there's actually a movie for the one and only Ivan. And then the one and only Bob is about the dog who's his friend, Bob. And this one is about Ruby, who is the little elephant. I would say these are, you know, they're written a little bit more for elementary age, I would say. And um, the chapters are really, like, really small. It's got very spaced out writing, so you get through it really quick. There's not a lot of writing on all the pages. Every so often, there's a little... A little drawing like just a little black and white drawing they're all like that it's a pretty like light easy read kind of book again it is aimed at a little bit more of like an elementary level but you know it's that whole thing like when you're doing a read aloud it's just different i just really find it's just different and everybody kind of just gets into it and enjoys it we read the first one and everybody really loved it we watched the movie which is great i would recommend the movie the movie is really well done i think it's on Disney maybe, Disney Plus, the one and only Ivan. And then of course we read the second one and then this one just came out I think this month or last month and I was like well it just came out this is probably a good one to end on. So yeah we're halfway through it and again it's just a cute story it focuses they are all in it but it kind of just focuses a little bit more about her story where she's come from. Yeah you kind of just learn a little bit more about little Ruby. All three of these books are great are great series um if you're looking for something like that and you have younger children i would say all in all it was a successful year for book picks um <laughs> 
again. Where the red fern grows, you can, I don't know. Um, but yeah, we enjoyed all of our books. I'm already on the lookout for next year's list of read-alouds and I will keep you guys posted on that when I get that finalized. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I would love for you to be a part of this community and don't forget to thumbs up and give this video a comment. It really helps out my channel and I love hearing from you guys and interacting with you guys. If you don't follow me on Instagram and you kind of just want to see what we're up to this summer, you know, just more day-to-day -day stuff, you can follow me on there as well. I hope you guys are doing fantastic and I will see you in my next video. Bye!